DAB, satellite and online. London's news, London stories. This is BBC London 94.9. The International Olympic Committee has the honor of announcing that the Games of the 30th Olympiad in 2012 are awarded to the city of London. BBC London 94.9 Sport. This is Towards 2012. Good afternoon and welcome to Towards 2012, your one-stop BBC London shop for everything that's happening ahead of the biggest sporting event in the world coming to the capital. On this show, that means a look at the latest London test event as archery takes over Lords. We celebrate recent success for our gymnasts and boxers ahead of 2012, as well as spotting another one to watch in the boxing ring. And it's one of the women. Darius Knight talks table tennis with us as the Londoner makes the move to Austria. We find out what it's like to be the mum of a London Olympic hopeful and get up to date with our men's wheelchair rugby team who are doing rather well at the moment. We'll also take a look back at the World Athletics Championships with the team captain, plus Deccan does wheelchair basketball. All between now and six o'clock here on Towards 2012. Emma Jones on BBC London 94.9. You're listening to Towards 2012 here on BBC London 94.9 where we will next turn our attention to men's wheelchair rugby because the team are currently competing in the European Championships in Switzerland. The British team are ranked sixth in the world. They last won the European Championships in 2007. However, I can tell you that they've made it all the way to the final this time and in fact they'll take on Sweden uh, in a matter of minutes uh, for that gold medal. I'm pleased to say that on the line now is uh, David Pond who's the chief executive executive of the British team. Thank you for, for speaking to us this afternoon, David. And what great news that, that the British team have got all the way to, to the final. Yeah, it's fantastic, Wendy. It's uh, really good news. It's, it was, it's an important performance indicator for us and an important tournament for us to do well in. Um, I, I know the team went into the competition hoping to win a goal. So is it any surprise that they're in the final? Are they one of the teams that is, is good enough to be there or thereabouts? Yeah, I mean, let's, let's be straight about it. We, we need to set our set sights high. Um, we need to be performing well in all of our big competitions, but particularly well in Europe. Um, but in terms of is it a surprise, um, I think there are eight very good teams here. I've just watched the third and fourth place match, and the game was won by one point. Um, in the semi-final when we played, uh, which we played yesterday against Belgium, we won that by one point. So it shows you that those top eight teams in Europe are very, very close and the competition is very, very strong indeed now uh, in Europe and is increasing all the time. It's an amazingly rough and tough sport, isn't it? Plenty of bumps and bruises, I'm sure, uh, that the team have had to contend with uh, coming into this final. How are they feeling uh, ahead of the start of the match against Sweden? Uh, they're, they're very positive. I mean, you know, this is this is high quality sport. This is you know, this is elite sport, and uh, and, and they've got to get used to that. They've got to roll with the bumps, and they've got to really keep themselves mentally tough and mentally focused. And of course, we have some really very good support staff. We have permanent medical staff and physios that are working on our team all the time, making sure they're in the best shape they possibly can be for every single game. Well, uh, Paralympic qualification places are up for grabs during these championships, but as far as our team is concerned, have we already qualified as a host nation? Is that not something we have to worry about ahead of next, uh, next year's Paralympics? Yeah, that's right. We, we have. We've qualified as a host nation, so we don't have to worry about that. But, I mean, in many ways, that's at the back of our minds because every single game that we play now is a game towards, you know, a game towards London. There are very few really high-quality competitions, interestingly, between now and London, and so we need to maximise these because, of course, it's, you know, when you're in these competitions, it's that mental toughness as well as your technical and uh, expertise. So I'm assuming your job now is to make sure that they take on as many good teams as they possibly can between now and the Paralympics. Yeah, absolutely. We, what, what I've got to make sure of is that uh, you know that our whole performance system is, is strong and is in place to give them the best competitive opportunities to to be to peak in London. And um, you know, to do that, we'll be sending the team off uh, to America after Christmas. Um, they'll stay in America from sort of mid-January through to March. And North American wheelchair rugby is incredibly strong. The game, of course, started in Canada. Um, there are more teams in America than, than any other country, which you'd probably expect. 
and the quality of rugby there is very, very high. So we need to be out there. We need to be testing ourselves against those American teams and the Canadian teams as well. And that's what we'll be doing for the start of uh, 2012. And as far as the crowds out there are concerned, how is it being received by the Swiss crowds? And what indication will this be of the interest uh, in wheelchair rugby uh, come the Paralympics? Well, you know, I think it's massive. It's really interesting. I mean, we're playing to full crowds, so you probably can't hear them because I've moved out of the way. Good move. There's so much noise in the stadium. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to hear anything. Um, but, um, no, it's massive. And, and we already know, of course, that the, the certainly the later events, I'm not, I don't know about the earlier events, but we all already know that the later events of the wheelchair rugby at London are already um, uh, sold out. And, in fact, there's a ballot for some of the later competitive games. So, I mean, that's going to be immense. That's 12,000 people who are going to be, you know, in that basketball uh, arena, um, watching wheelchair rugby, which is which is which is enormous, you know, and, and the game is. I mean, I think people, you know, perhaps don't don't realise, but the game is 27 nations in the world that are playing. Um, America have just put two and a half million pounds into South America through one of the USAID funds to start. Uh, for six countries down there to start playing wheelchair rugby and we also know that Russia uh, has put in a huge amount of money and they want to start wheelchair rugby in Russia so there's two you know massive new development programs out there so it, you know it is the fastest uh, growing um, Paralympic sport and I think it's because it is genuinely exciting to watch and people like the crash of the chairs and they like the action. And uh, I'm just, I mean, it's great that we've got to the, the finals of a European Championships because I, I, I'm sure it's important for you and for the team that you're not just there next summer to make up the numbers. It's important that, you know, Britain is well represented and does well in this competition. Yeah, no, we'll compete, you know, and we should compete because, we, you know, we've been well supported, you know, UK sport is behind us, the lottery's behind us. We've got a good system in place. You know, we've still got, uh, you know, it's a lot of work to do. Our development squad is now coming on. Um, so, you know, it's 2012 and beyond. You know, 2016 is already in our sights as well. Um, absolutely not to make the numbers up. You know, this is a serious sport in Great Britain. We need to, you know, and we need to actually prove that we're worth the investment that we're getting. Well, David, thank you very much for speaking to us this afternoon. And we'll, we'll wish the team the best of luck in that final against Sweden. Just getting underway there, uh, Britain against Sweden in the European Championships in Switzerland. Still to come this afternoon on Towards 2012, the spotlight falls on our top women's boxer as our latest BBC London one to watch. London's best table tennis player, uh, Darius Knight, decides to make the move to Austria. And we find out just how important family is to our top Olympic athletes as well, with one fencing mum. All that to come after the latest travel and news.